doggy pounds. I'm going into your, um, wow, that's super washed out, whatever. This is your lab handout. If you take a look at the lab handout, I've divided the axial musculature by function. I've sorted the 23 required muscles into categories based on function. So my first category that I have are muscles of facial expression. And this, uh, actually I don't think I put it that way. I just said muscles of the face. But their, their function is facial expression. So let's look at the muscles that we need to know for facial expression for all of them. You do not have to memorize the attachments of these muscles of facial expression. You do need to know their action and you need to be able to find them. I would argue that if you know their action and you know where to find them, you could give a rockin' solid argument or educated guess about the attachments of these muscles, but it's not something that I'm actually going to ask you on a test or a quiz. So if we were to take a look at who are we going to name here, let's name, oh, sure, we'll go blue. Frontalis muscle, we have to know this one. Front, and the occipital frontalis is its full name, the frontal belly as opposed to it has an occipital belly which is in the posterior portion of your head. Um, <clears throat> we're just, frontalis muscle is fine. If you want to call it occipital frontalis with the frontal belly, I'm fine with that too. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, frontalis muscle, look at the fiber direction. You can see it's totally attached to, like, your skull. What is it going to do? It raises your eyebrows. That's the frontalis muscle right here. It makes these lovely little wrinkles here that, oh, my gosh, how funny is it that people don't want those wrinkles there when they raise their eyebrows? And so they put in Botox to make it, I guess, so they can never raise their eyebrows again. If this, if occipital frontalis muscle was actually um, paralyzed by Botox toxin. Holy crud, humans are so weird. Okay. Orbicularis oculi, look at this one. Orbicularis oculi surrounds like an orb, a circle, a circular muscle around the eye. Guess what orbicularis oris is going to do if those muscle fibers shorten. Now think about this. Here's the muscle. Imagine all your thick and thin filaments overlapping each other and the fibers shorten. What happens around here? like a, like a that. They cause your eyes to blink. Squinting is orbicularis oculi. Did I say oris? Because I kind of think I did. Oculi, oculars, throwing things, that they go around your eyes. Orbicularis oris, another round muscle, but this time it's surrounding your oral cavity. Orbicularis oris, is your kissing muscle. The action for orbicularis oris is definitely to kiss someone. So if you practice your muscles, you can practice them by kissing people and say, I'm contracting my orbicularis oris. And now I'm contracting my orbicularis oculi too. Perfect. Buccinator. Buccinator is I would almost argue that buccinator is not a muscle of facial expression unless um, it's more like a muscle that keeps food from sticking in your cheeks, like it helps you keep food in your mouth to chew. Here's what the buccinator does. It's a deep muscle and it's in your cheek itself. You can see it right here. We will be able to see it on George the man, and here's what it does. Are you ready? Not the first part. Not that part. I'm going to blow up my cheeks, and then I'm going to show you, then I'm going to contract my buccinator. When I go like this, that means I'm about to contract my buccinator. You ready? Do you see that? Buccinator squishes your cheeks. 
and look at it. Look at those muscles. If, if that buccinator is all stretched out when I blow air into my cheeks, and then the fibers shorten like this, and then that shortening is what squishes your cheeks in and blows the air out. Buccinator is called the, um, like the trumpet player's muscle because you have to have a really rock star buccinator to play the trumpet. Not that I've ever played the trumpet before. One more. Two more. Zygomaticus, what? Zygomaticus is not um, listed. Zygomaticus. I love zygomaticus. Do you know why? Look at this muscle. Look at where it attaches. There's actually two of them here. The attachment is right here. What is going to happen if zygomaticus, it attaches to your cheekbone, which is your zygomatic bone, and it attaches to the corners of your lips. And when it contracts, oh, it's the smiling muscle. This is really awesome because you have smiling and kissing that you have to practice to practice your anatomy this week. I guarantee that I'm never going to want to watch this lecture. Okay, zygomaticus makes you smile. One more, platysma. Platysma isn't on here. Platysma is the most superficial muscle. It attaches to your chin. It's a weird one. It comes all the way down through your neck and even attaches, like, to this skin in here. And guess what it makes you do? Do you see I just contracted my platysma? Yeah, that's all platysma. So go ahead and do that. Do a, like, we call that a grimace face. Yeah, and that's all platysma. It's an awkward muscle because it is so unbelievably superficial. But in dissection, if you are not really careful about just getting the thin layer of skin off, you will take platysma with you. That's a sad story. <gasps> that's it. That platysma is weird because it's a facial expression muscle, but it's kind of found in the neck. But I put it in with facial expressions because it attaches here to your face. And this is definitely a facial expression. Okay, don't put, make that face anymore. Use your zygomaticus instead and give me a great big smile and let's do muscles of our neck. If I can find out how to turn this off, which is really important. I have learned. 